class number six. In this lesson, we continue to explore weighted voting systems and we learn about the BPI, the Bonzoff Power Index. One, here are URLs to two YouTube videos on weighted voting systems. Hearing another person explain how to do SSPI and BPI might help lock in the concepts for you. Check them out if you have a chance. One is four minutes, the other is seven minutes. Two, in our last class, we saw the shapley schubeck Power Index as a way to measure distribution of power in a weighted voting system. Today, we see another way to measure power in weighted voting systems, the Bonzoff Power Index. The Parliament of Icelandia has 200 members. The Red Party has 99 seats, the Blue Party has 98 seats, and the Green Party has three seats. Decisions are made by majority vote. Uh, so if there are 200 members, then a majority means more than half. That is more than 100, so the quota is 101. Write this weighted voting system using our standard notation. So remember, standard notation for weighted voting systems is bracket. Quota goes first, colon, and then we list the number of votes in decreasing order. 99, comma, 98, comma, 3, close the bracket. Let's fill in the table below. Some of the definitions are below the table, but we'll figure things out together as we go. We'll represent the players with the letters R, B, and G for red, blue, and green, respectively. Let's give this a try. Okay, so uh, we're going to list coalitions. So uh, first coalition could be just red in favor, and red is the only one in favor. Another coalition is blue by themselves. Another coalition is green by themselves. That is all of the individuals voting alone. And then we're going to look at these guys in pairs. So we could have R and blue in favor, but not green. We could have R and green in favor, but not blue. We could have blue and green in favor, but not red. And that's all three pairs of people. And then finally, if we had like another spring break kind of vote, clearly all three would be in favor. And uh, that's the only trio of voters. So this is very different from the ordered list that we were talking about last class. We have R and G. We don't have G and R. There's no ordering here. We're just listing all of the different coalitions. Um, technically, we should put like these little funny squiggly braces around each of them, but I'm going to be lazy and not put them all the way throughout. OK, and then we're going to look at the uh, weight for each of these coalitions here, assuming that uh, everybody that's listed here is going to say yes to whatever motion is on the floor. So uh, remember, uh, red was here, and blue was here, and green was there. OK, so uh, in this first row, red is the only one in favor, so red's weight is 99. In the second row, only blue, so that's 98. In the third row, only green, so that's three. In the fourth row, red and fourth fourth row, red and blue are together. So 99 plus 98, that's 197 votes altogether. Red with green is 102, 99 plus three. Blue with green is 98 plus three, that's 101. And finally, if all three of these guys are in favor, 99 plus 98 plus three is 200. Okay, and um, in the first column here, it says winning coalitions. Now, I've actually listed all of the coalitions, and some of these do not win. Remember, the quota here is 101, which means 101 is enough. Anything greater than or equal to 101 is enough, but anything less than 101 is not enough. So I'm actually going to put a line through the losing coalitions right now, just so that I'm not bothered by them. So anything less than 101 gets crossed off. So red by themselves, blue by themselves, green by themselves. If one of these pairs was less than 101, I would cross them off. Uh, there might be a question here. What do you do if it's exactly 101, exactly the quota passes the motion? So 101 is a winning coalition. So blue-green stays. So uh, as you're filling in this table in homework and in tests and things like that, you don't need to actually list every coalition, but you might find it useful to make sure you don't miss anything to just list them all and then cross off all the non-winning ones. OK, so let's think about uh, critical players. So we haven't uh, defined this phrase yet, so we'll define it right now. Um, a critical player is someone, uh, is a player, where if you removed them from the coalition, the coalition would go from being a winning coalition to being a losing coalition. So let's take a look at this first row that isn't crossed off. We've got red with blue. So in this case, they have 197 votes between them. Suppose that we consider red to decide whether or not red is really necessary in this coalition to keep it a winning coalition. Let's temporarily cross red off. 
if we cross red off, then we only have blue here. How many votes does blue have by themselves? 98. 98 is not enough. So with red out of the picture, this becomes a losing coalition, which means that red meets our definition for being um, a critical player. Red is critical to the success of that particular coalition. If red goes away and everybody else stays in favor, the coalition loses. So let's play the same game considering blue in that same coalition. We temporarily cross off blue. How many votes do we have now? Well, red by themselves is 99, which is not enough, which means we absolutely need blue in this coalition for it to stay winning, which means that blue is also a critical player. Next row, red and green together. Suppose that we consider red and drop them temporarily. How many votes does green have by themselves? Just three, that's not nearly enough. So that means that red is critical. If we look at green, temporarily cross them off, red by themselves is 99, not enough. So green is critical. And you can hopefully do the same kind of thing in this next row to see that both blue and green are critical. So it starts to seem like critical doesn't really have much meaning because we're just writing down every letter in every winning coalition. But things are gonna get interesting in this last row. By the way, this last row, which is the coalition of everybody is called the grand coalition. That definition is at the bottom of the page. Okay, let's consider red. Suppose that we removed red temporarily and we ask ourselves, do the remaining folks have enough power without red here in order to stay a winning coalition? So let's see, blue's got 98 and green has three, so that's a total of 101, which is exactly the quota, which is enough to keep this coalition winning. So is red critical to the success of this particular winning coalition? No, because this coalition would still win even, even if red decided to bail out. So red is not a critical player. Let's take a look at B, temporarily getting rid of B. We have R and G left over. How many votes? That's 99 plus three, that's 102. That's enough, which means that B is not critical to the success of this coalition. If B disappeared, the coalition would still win. So B is not critical. Same idea, if we cross off green, red and blue is 99 plus 98, that's 197, that's plenty. So green is not critical there. And in this case, we see we have no critical players in that last coalition. So in some instances, instances, you will have exactly one critical player coming out of a coalition. We didn't have that here. We always had more than one. And sometimes you have no critical players coming out of a coalition, and that's okay. And now we are going to um, list the, uh, we're gonna make fractions that represent the amount of power each of these players has. So here we go, red, blue, and green. Let us count how many times each of these players was critical. So I see red here once, twice, and that is all. So red is critical twice. Looking at blue, once, twice, that's it. And then finally looking at green, once, twice. Green is critical twice. Again, we're a big fan of percentages, so let's make these fractions. We're gonna take each of these numbers and divide by however many uh, critical players there were in total, all together. So two ways to do that, either you count all of these, which is six people, or you add these here, which is also six people. And we're gonna divide each of these by six. And so we can see that we get roughly 33% of the power for each player. which actually is pretty doggone surprising. If you look at the number of votes, if you look at each player's weight, 99, 98, and three, it would seem like the 99 is the most powerful, maybe just a hair more powerful than the 98, but both of these guys dwarf the power of the three, or at least that's what it looked like on the surface, but that is not the reality. Those three votes are just as important as red's 99 and blue's 98. If the person with three disappeared, um, then uh, they would uh, have they would have just as much power in disappearing as red or blue did. It's quite surprising. Okay, so some vocabulary down here. I think we've talked about it. Um, unordered coalitions, any so a set of players who might join forces and vote the same way, uh, and then we use set notation to describe them with the curly braces. Last sentence there, a coalition consisting of all the players is called the grand coalition. A winning coalition is a coalition that has enough votes to win. Any other coalition is called a losing coalition. 
And then the most important thing here, a critical player is a member of a coalition uh, where the coalition must have that player's votes to win. Next page. We now define a precise way to measure each player's power using the Bonzoff power index. It's actually just what we did when we calculated that two sixths for each player on the previous page. You make a list of all possible coalitions and determine which ones are winning. We crossed off in green the losing coalitions. You find the critical players in each winning coalition. That is the time consuming and error prone part of the calculation. Part C, to find a player's Bonzoff power index, count the total number of times that player is critical then divide that by the total number of times all players are critical. So we had two, two, and two, and we divided each by the total, which was six. Number six, note that the procedure for finding BPI and the procedure for finding SSPI are at the beginning of this packet. You may use this reference sheet on the test. Number seven, let's calculate the BPI for the Icelandia example. It's actually done already, but we'll just put our answer here. So we discovered that red and blue and green are both critical were all three critical twice, and then divide everything by the number of critical players, which was six. So each of them has 33 and a third percent of the power, all equal. Eight, computing the BPI and SSPI by hand becomes very time consuming as the number of players increases, but we can let technology help us with the dirty work. Let's use the following web page to confirm the BPI uh, for the Icelandia example. Let's try that here. Okay, it looks intimidating, but it's not that hard. Uh, first thing we do is put in the first player's weight. For Icelandia, the first player had a weight of 99. Multiplicity just says, how many people do you have with exactly that weight? If there was more than one person with the 99, you wouldn't need to put 99 a bunch of times. You just put how many people have a weight of 99. In this case, it's just one. Uh, the next weight was a 98, and there was only one of them, and the next weight was a 3, that was the green party, and there was one of them, and that is all, and then the quota in this case was 101, and we click Submit, and we see here the uh, BPI, we had 2, 2, and 2, but each of them had to get divided by 6, you can see the weights over here, and there's your 33 and a third percent. Um, we can ignore this PBPI column, but SSPI is not something we calculated for uh, Icelandia, but it turns out it's also 33 and a third percent for each of these three parties. Remember, SSPI was the one where we looked at the ordered coalitions and we decided who was pivotal in every single uh, ordering of the players. Okay. Uh, we're also going to find the BPI and SSPI for the King example, which we talked about last class. Uh, we didn't actually calculate it before. We just wrote that um, the notation. So let's give that a shot here. So uh, the King had a weight of three and there was only one of him. And then the advisors had a weight of one and there were four of them. And the quota in all was four. And so we click submit and we can see that the uh, for the BPI, the King, which had a weight of three, has about uh, 63 and a half, 63 and change percent of the power. Each of the advisors has a little over 9% of the power. Ignore this column here, but then SSPI, we can see it's actually a different number. Instead of 63 and change, it's 60% of the power for the king, 10% of the power for each of the four advisors. Number nine, let's take a closer look at how many coalitions there are for a weighted voting system with different numbers of players. Instead of using P1, P2, P3, P4 to represent the players, we'll use the letters A, B, C, D. Okay, so just gonna list all the different uh, coalitions, forgetting about winning or losing or anything. Um, okay, so single players by themselves, uh, A or B, and then the grand coalition in this case is just A, B. And so altogether we have a total of three coalitions when there are two players. Now there are three players, single coalitions, A, B, C, and we've got pairs, A, B, A, C, and B, C, and then finally the grand coalition, A, B, C. So altogether, seven coalitions when there are three players. We saw those seven coalitions in the big table we made on the previous page. Four players, okay, this is gonna get a little bit longer, but we can do this. Singles by themselves, A, B, C, and D. Pairs, A, B, A, C, A, D. B, C, B, D, C, D, six pairs. Trios, A, B, C, A, B, D, B, C, D. I have skipped one that is the most commonly skipped one in my experience, it is A, C, D. Don't forget about that one. Okay, and then finally the grand coalition, A, B, C, D. 
So counting these things up, four pairs, uh, sorry, four singles, uh, six pairs, four trios, and one grand coalition. And if we've done this right, we should get 15 all together here. Okay, uh, five players, I'm not gonna list them out, but I will tell you the answer is 31. And so maybe there's some spiffy little formula we can use that will calculate the number of um, number of uh, coalitions given n players, and there is. So here's our spiffy formula. You take two, you raise it to the power of n. That n is an exponent, not two times n, it's two raised to the n, but then you subtract one. And so for example, if we look at n equals four, and we're doing two to the fourth, subtract one, two to the fourth, that's two times two times two times two, if you carefully count that out, you'll get 16, subtract 1, 15, which matches what we got when we actually listed all of the coalitions.